Retraction extension is a very powerful tool when it comes to the neck. It can be used as an evaluation or assessment tool and, both, and as well as a treatment tool. Retraction extension is sometimes the only revealing motion in an evaluation. For example, retraction might be full and pain-free and extension might also be full and pain-free. But when you combine those two motions, retraction, extension, that transition zone can be where patients report considerable pain and or an ability to do that transition, transitioning from retraction into full extension. So one thing that I have started using with patients years ago is training wheels. And that's what I call them because hand support to the neck can be provided to ameliorate pain with the movement. Now, I want people to understand that pain alone with a movement is not a red flag or an indication that that movement cannot be therapeutic. As I explain to patients all the time, pulling off, pulling out a splinter or relocating a dislocated shoulder, those endeavors hurt, but they're therapeutic. And no, I'm not trying to make people hurt, but there's an algorithm and there's an understanding of what is allowable and therapeutic pain and what is not. And you know, pain that persists is obviously not really helping our cause, but momentary pain when you're moving into a position that does not last, that is temporary, is almost always acceptable and sometimes encouraged. So for every diagnosis and for every move, I have a clear understanding of what pain I will allow the patient to experience and what pain is an indication that we're moving in the wrong direction or we need to stop. So retraction extension can often be painful, but in and of itself, that's not a reason not to do it. We have to understand the entire clinical picture and what we're trying to achieve. But if the pain is too much, especially so much so that the patient will not do the exercise or the movement, then training wheels with the hands for support can be really, really helpful. And I use that metaphor because training wheels, just like the ones on your bike, are not meant to be used forever. They're meant to be used as needed temporarily in order for the patient to be able to succeed eventually without them. So training wheels looks like this, retraction, extension with hand support. And the amount of hand support is variable based on need. And some patients are able to go back into the motion retraction extension without support, but need those hands to pull them back um, up to neutral. So what the patient needs is what the patient is going to be using. And I tell patients, I expect over the course of days for you to be able to abandon the training wheels. Um, it doesn't take weeks or months. If I have the right direction, or if we have chosen the right direction to test and it turns out to be fruitful as treatment, then I expect that that pain with moving, moving those neck joints with some support will become less and less painful over the course of days and that you'll be able to use less and less hand support until your neck is able to do it independently. Some patients talk about how they don't feel like they have the strength to come back from extension into neutral. And I, you know, I'm not going to go into a large discussion about that, but I don't believe that the neck flexors just got randomly weak. I believe it's a mechanical problem. So the joint is not functioning properly and that can create some disturbance in how the muscles function, but it's not a strengthening exercise nor is it something that I think is really determined by strength. I think it's determined by if the joints are moving freely and well, the neck has the clear ability to retract and extend. And what this looks like from the side with training wheels is normal and then retraction extension with the training wheels. Now, whether or not I use this directional preference exercise for a patient is depending on whether or not the diagnosis is a neck derangement, which is the diagnosis that I give to at least 75, 85% of patients who present to me with neck pain, and whether or not that is the specific directional preference that will help that patient ameliorate or abolish symptoms and restore any mobility loss and functional losses. If you're curious about learning more about what a neck joint derangement is, how we find if there's a directional preference for the neck. Robin McKenzie wrote the book, Treat Your Own Neck, which is short and sweet. 
it's only about $12 on Amazon and it goes into this methodology so that patients can try to self-assess and self-treat at home. Um, the book does not go into the training wheels uh, part of this process. So I will present to you that if you're trying to self-assess and self-treat and it's too painful to retract and extend as a combined movement, then you can try using your hands for some support.